Reportedly, some of the Chicago Bears coaches have had it with Nate Davis and his inability to really give effort in practice. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Plus, DJ Moore gets honest about the Chicago Bears' offensive shortcomings. We're going to talk about both those and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot. For everything Chicago Bears related, I'm the host there, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for today. I want to start off with this from Adam Hogue. He says this directly in regard to starting right guard Nate Davis saying this. Since training camp started, it's been a disaster. Nate Davis is probably not only a huge national story, but locally, it's been a big story for the last two years. He doesn't like to practice. The Bears are frustrated with him not practicing. I think he uh he has going he I think he was going to lose that starting job at right guard to Ryan Bates. But Ryan Bates got hurt. And last week actually Ryan Bates outsnapped Nate Davis in the opener in the rotation. But then Ryan Bates suffered another injury this week in practice and he's now on IR. So Nate Davis is out there by default. They they uh they got nobody else there to put in even though I don't think they want to play him. The interior of the offensive line is probably the least sexy thing to talk about when it comes to football, but right now for the for the Bears, it's their biggest problem. That is a lot to unpack there. Um, and, you know, this is things that we heard. You know, we talked about it last season around Nate Davis before we ended up finding out about the tragedy that happened with him and his family is that reportedly Nate Davis just didn't like to practice. That, that as a veteran, he's just somebody who didn't like to practice. But then things started turning around this this season, right? He was initially not not uh, healthy to start training camp. Then he had a month straight leading into the Bears, uh, you know, preseason in the far, as far as him being healthy and performing out there. And now it just seems like it's a continual problem. We talked last week, you know, when we looked at that metric that was used as far as, you know, the each snap that Nate Davis played and how he had some that were that he excelled on, uh, some that were mid, but then he had some absolutely that he got blown up on. And, you know, to hear from Adam Hogue, who take it with a grain of salt, you know, through every insider. I just want to throw that out there. Every single insider in every sport, take everything they say with a grain of salt. But, you know, he is somebody who is connected with the Bears. And to hear that, that if there's even any inkling that, hey, Nate Davis, they don't even want to play him if they didn't have to. Right now, he's out there playing because he has to play. That is something that really stands out, I think, loud there when you look at somebody who needs to be trying to perform and give you something out there. So, you know, at the end of the day, Nate Davis and his performance out there leaves a lot to be desired. Now, is he the only thing out there? No. The Bears offensive line as a whole, Coleman Shelton hasn't been great for the Bears either. I don't care what the PFF grade said for, for week two for him. He has not been the best out there, especially not the way that he looked in preseason and not what you expect from a starting center. Yeah, he's been better, right, than what we've had the last few years, but it, has not, it doesn't take much to be better. That still doesn't put you in a place where being great, right? And that's what you're also looking at from this uh, this Bears team. So all those things included right now where it sits with Nate Davis, where it sits with um, the Chicago Bears is that you want you want him to be better. The Bears may be looking to upgrade that position sooner rather than later. And you look at it, three years, $30 million guaranteed from the Chicago Bears when we signed him in 2023. And of that, we haven't gotten a lot of nothing. And, you know, it, it, it ultimately comes down to Ryan Poles has to be better at evaluating the offensive line. And while I know it's turned into a meme or whatever to say, and a lot of people say things about, uh, you know, Nate Davis and, uh, and well, Ryan Poles' inability to, to really evaluate offensive linemen now, even Bears fans going on and say, well, he's getting linemen that performed like he did. There's a reason why, why he didn't make it far as far as an offensive lineman. I'm not about to get into all that. I really don't care about what how Ryan Poles was an offensive lineman or not. At this point, I care about how, as a GM, how he's going out there and trying to fix this offensive line. And we keep talking about ifs. And at some point, it needs to change from an if. If Ryan Poles is going to go out there and try to find an upgrade for the office, offensive line. Um, if Ryan Poles is going to go out there and spend a draft assets to do it. I'm not saying that he needs to just spin the farm to bring in an offensive lineman. Not saying that at all. But we need more from him. Period. We need more. And if we're not going to get it from them, listen, that that brings its own thing. It's going to be its own, uh, you know, storyline over the course of the season. Another Chicago Bears season and another young quarterback that is a that is getting attacked in an offense now that is being held back in a lot of parts due to its offensive line. We need to perform better. And if we're not, 
It's going to be just continue to go down, down to hell for the Chicago Bears. There's no sign of this thing improving. The talent that we have in 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 house, right? Unless Karen Amagaje is all of a sudden ready and is going to be a stud for the Chicago Bears, he's still not. Well, he wasn't on the injury report last week, but we'll see what happens there. Something has to give. We got. We have to get better talent on that offensive line. That just is what it is. And if we aren't getting it, it's going to be a complete shit show for the Chicago Bears. We need better. We deserve better from them. And until we get it, it is going to be ugly. Period. We need better. We deserve better. Al, Caleb Williams deserves better. The talent that you put on this team deserves better. Does that mean that it's all on Nate Davis? No. You know, and I saw an article as well asking or saying that Nate Davis is starting to become a, a scapegoat for the offense and Caleb Williams problems. No, it's not. Because if you're being fair in your evaluation, two things can be true at the same time. Nate Davis can be absolute shit, but we still got things that we need to work on and improve. So, no, it's not about making any one thing or aspect the scapegoat. That includes Caleb Williams. It's not just Caleb Williams. It's not just Shane Waldron. It's not just Nate Davis and the interior offensive line. It's a combination of all these things going on, right? Caleb Williams got the ball out there pretty quickly, right? So even with the pressure that the Bears have, and make no mistake about it, there are a lot of pressures. 42 pressures overall did the Chicago, did, did the Chicago Bears have in that game. That sucks. You need more. You need more time than I would say more time than that. But yeah, a quarterback should not have to be under pressure. But even though Caleb Williams got the ball out quickly and he made decisions quickly, like it's a rookie quarterback, you're going to need the time to develop and things like that. So overall, this this team has to start improving. And you know, even hearing from DJ Moore in regards to the offense saying this, the defense is connected. They go out there, they get three and outs, and we struggle to keep the ball moving. We struggle to keep the ball moving. With the talent that we have on this team, we struggle to keep the ball moving. It, like I said, it's everything in this. And you know, I've seen some people who say, oh, well, it's not really Shane Waldron. No, Shane Waldron's play calling is a part of this as well. Overall, right now, I knew, and I've been saying it, right? If you guys have been listening to Chicago Bears Central, watching us on YouTube for a while, you've been hearing me say, I did not expect this offense to look like a perfect weld oil machine into the bye week. Maybe, and that that's damn near through halfway through the season, right? Week seven, week eight. That's when I want this team to just be firing on all cylinders. But I did expect it to look better than this initially. Now, that does not mean that it's all, it's gloom and doom. It's all done, all for not for the Chicago Bears. No, despite what some people are going to try to make you feel, things like that, it's not done yet. It's not done. But this Bears team needs to start, start showing signs of getting this offense the fuck together because if it does not, it's going to be an ugly season, and we deserve more than that. Now, that doesn't mean we are going to get it, right? It would be just like a Chicago Bears season to come in after spending so many, so much money on and assets, money and assets to bring in talent to this team, to then have an offense that is absolutely trash. The Bears right now, through the first two weeks, have 353 yards of total offense. That is the, lo the fourth lowest in the Super Bowl era. We're talking about longer than most of us have been alive. That's how, that's how, that it, it's, it's right now the Chicago Bears offense isn't generational. Like we hope Kayla Williams to be not generationally good. We have a generationally bad offense through the first two weeks of the season. That's just facts. That's not hyperbole. That it's a generationally bad first two weeks of the season for the Chicago Bears offense. Now it's up to Shane Waldron. It's even up to Matt Eberflus as the head coach of the team because Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator, you're, you're doing your job. The defense looks great. The defense looks amazing in a lot of aspects. Perfect, no, but amazing, yes. But at Matt Eberflus as the head coach, there is so much left to be desired with this team. And as the head coach, you are responsible for every single facet of this, of this team. The offense, the defense, the special teams, the rotations, you are responsible for that. Yes, you delegated some to, to, to your position coaches and to your coordinators, as every head coach does, but it's still, ultimately, it comes down to you. And that's something that, you know, we talked about the growth of Matt Eberfuss. We sat there in Hard Knocks and saw you sat down and talked to Nick Saban, and it was all great feels, but guess what? The feeling's gone. The feeling is gone. And that just is what it is. The feeling is gone. Now you got to try to restore. you got to try to show us something. I said it before. I'm in my show-me era when it comes to the Chicago Bears. You're going to have to show me, right? Yeah, you got tons of potential, but not a damn thing was won on paper. Not a, not a single team has won anything on paper 
being good on paper is one thing. Having talent on paper is one thing. Hell, going out and getting your number one overall pick in Kayla Williams and getting Roma Dunze in the same dra- uh, draft is one thing. But it all doesn't mean shit if we're not seeing if we're seeing results like this on the football field. We have to be better in execution. We have to be better at u- utilizing our weapons. We have to be better in just every facet of what we're doing out there right now. Because guess what? It's a shitty situation right now. That's what it's looking like a porta potty out there. It's real shitty and funky. That's where it is right now for the Chicago Bears. And it's not go- this is not going to be good if it continues to go down this path. It's not going to be good. And if we want to get in the place of being better, hey, everybody got to take their everybody got to take their lumps. Everybody got to take their responsibility for their aspect of where this team is and you have to be better. You have to be better. Caleb Williams was blitzed 41.7% of the time. 41.7% of the time. And guess what? When you have an offensive line that's been performing the way the Chicago Bears have, it's the, the story's out. People are going to keep trying to blitz you because guess what? Until you stop somebody, you, you, got no, you got no reason why anything else should look. So I had the number reverses. 41% of the time we were blitzed. We had 36 pressures on 42 pass attempts. Now, some of those pressures happened on the same play, and I think that's something that was, that was talked about incorrectly. So it's 23 team pressures on 48 dropbacks, but still, at the end of the day, hey, listen, he was still pressured out there on m- most of the time. We have to be better, and, and I hope that this team is looking at this. Also, another concerning stat from the offense right now through two games, Caleb Williams is 0 for 11 on downfield passes of at least 15 yards through the first two games of the season. Bad. Bad. And that's why I say, Caleb isn't, you're you're not dodging the smoke, not here at Chicago Bears Central. 0 for 11, you have connected on no down the field passes. That is why when people who are critiquing Caleb Williams, and they say, well, hell, can he make a pass outside of five feet? Weren't we we having that same conversation? Bears fans are tired about talking about the same shit and having the same things to judge about this team. Now, everything isn't bad, right? Let, let me be clear. Every, everything is not all doom and gloom. I want to be clear. I'm pissed off as a Bears fan, and hopefully, you know, this provides a level of therapy. I'll start being back to more optimistic and focusing on next week's game on tomorrow's daily episode. But as of right now, I'm pissed because, and, and, and not pissed in the sense of, like, being unreasonably pissed. I understood there was going to be some struggles from Caleb Williams as a rookie. I tried to prepare you guys that Caleb Williams wasn't going to step on the field and, and day one look generation. It wasn't going to be that. But we have, like, our wide receivers can perform better. Our running backs can perform better. And the Bears overall have to look at some things that they really want to change about this team. But the great thing that we have, the defense is real. This defense is legit. This is going to be a top five defense in the NFL this season. I have no doubts about it. I say, especially when you look at the way that they adjust, a defense that can adjust in the second half and make the adjustments that the Bears have at, at, at the consistency in which they've done it, that's going to be a, that's a sign of a great defense. How do you learn from whatever mistakes, or not even necessarily mistakes, just how do you learn to take away from what a team was doing well in the first half of games? The Chicago Bears, they have that part down pat. They have that part down pat. But they got to start looking at some things we need to change, and that's what it brings us to next. What needs to change for the Chicago Bears? A lot of it's some of the same thing. Like, yeah, we want better production from our offensive line. Uh, Ryan Poe's got to get on the phones. If, if, if this offensive line, I said week three, if, if, we, if, we, if we look as bad as what we have in week three again on that offensive side of the ball, we got to do something. Ryan, I would be extremely surprised if Ryan Poe's doesn't try to find something to do for this team. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I would just be surprised if it doesn't. Then also, Better use of her personnel. More under center. I, want, I would love to see more under center, especially to establish that run game. We have to establish a run game. Whether you look at, some people look at Khalil Herbert as a better running back. Some people say DeAndre Swift as a dual threat running back is better. I don't care. Use both they asses. We need to, to rely on our run game a little bit more. A, a solid run game is a young quarterback's best friend. We need to be in the defense, but we've got the defense aspect. We need to do better at establishing the run game. We have to. What do you have? The three-headed monster that you have down there in Khalil Herbert, DeAndre Swift, and then you got Roshan Johnson as well who can be a bruiser for you. Hell, Ro- Roshan Johnson wants contact. Use those guys. Double down on using the talent that you have here 
And if you're not going to do it, what the fuck are you doing with it? If you're not going to use Khalil Herbert, trade him. Go out and use Khalil Herbert. Use how good he is. Go out there and get you some offensive help. If you're not going to use him. Otherwise, run his ass. Run him. Him and DeAndre Swift, run him. Utilize them in the passing game. Use your tight ends. So good in the second half of the game, you realize you have one of the best tight ends in the game of football in Cole Komet. Use them more. Go and use them more. Be better. Be smarter. Be this offensive coordinator, this dynamic, creative offensive coordinator that you were supposed to bring here to Chicago. Can you be that for us? That's what we need from this team. We need to make adjustments. I'm glad that you set Velas ass, uh, Jones' ass down, but we got more things that need to be adjusted. Is Matt Eberflus and Ryan Poles ready to, to make the tough decision? Is this coaching staff ready to make the tough decision? Shane Walter can talk all day about needing to get this team in rhythm and X, Y, Z. You're not doing it. Go out and find a way to do it. And if you're not, get off the fucking seat. We got to be better. We got to be better. Now, I was so frustrated yesterday. That's why Bobby was on the daily with me. I, I literally reached out to Bobby and I said, Bobby, I can't do the show alone today. I can't. Like, because it, it literally, yesterday's show would have literally just been me yelling at the screen. And that's not good entertainment. That's not good podcasting. That's not good content creation. But uh, one of the things that I do like to do on Mondays is play the voicemails that you guys left from the game. It's Tuesday, but we're going to get into some of those. This first one, this one's from Darius. What's going on, man? Darius from Dallas here. Uh, it should look familiar, don't it, fellas? Uh, you know, a lot of lateral throws, not a lot of vertical ta- attacking down the field. Um, uh, offensive line is absolutely trash. Why y'all? I'm not going to say y'all because I don't, I don't know who was exactly high on him or not. Uh, but Braxton Jones is trash. I, I, I would like for y'all to quit saying. Uh, uh, that that he's good. He's just not. He's just simply not. Uh, and, and Hayes, I just got to disagree with you on that, man. I I, I, I try to be open minded about it, but uh, uh, Braxton Jones is just absolute trash. So is, so is Coleman Shelton, and we're falling into that same Chicago Bears uh, pattern. There's no there's no wonder we haven't had a winning quarterback since Jay Cutler, and before that we didn't have one since Sid, Sid Luckman. Because we go through the same bullshit. We don't value offensive line. Because all of our money doesn't go to offensive line. All our money goes to fucking defense every fucking time, every year. We bring these quarterbacks in there. We don't, we don't invest any serious resources to offensive line other than Darnell Wright. We haven't really invested in anything. Uh, Nate Davis is obviously a bad pickup. Um, it, 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 we do the same shit. And then the quarterback comes in here. He's running for his life. He gets his ass sacked. And then we call him a bust, and we send him out, and we start the cycle all over again. This is an organizational issue. This is an organizational issue. This is a pattern, guys. This, this is this is what we do. This is what we have done since I've been, at least since I've been alive. We don't value offensive line. We don't put our resources in offensive line. But what do we go do? Get all these goddamn defensive players all the time. It's got to be the McCaskies that are influencing this shit, man. Because it's the same. No matter what GM we got, it's the same thing. You bring a goddamn quarterback in there. He's got talent, he's got potential, and we don't give him an offensive line. And that goes back to what I was saying before with the draft. Fuck, fuck Keenan Allen, fuck Roma Dunze. I would have been cool with running it with DJ Moore, Tyler Scott, a badass offensive lineman. We could have got CJ Latham that Tennessee picked up. That kid's looking like a fucking stud. And then we could have got another guy in free agency instead of Keenan Allen. What if we could have got Trent Williams with that Keenan Allen money? We're never going to be good. Until we start taking this fucking offensive line development seriously. Stop just focusing on defense. Stop being infatuated with the bells and whistles and focus on that fucking offensive line. We're following the same goddamn pattern all over again. Y'all are going to be saying this kid's a bust just like you did with Justin. Check this up, bear down. All right, Darius. Um, I mean, listen, I'm not even going to try to defend anything on this offensive line. I've said it before as far as Braxton. I never said that Braxton's great. I just said that he's not terrible. And uh, up until this, I don't think that he has been. I think Braxton Jones has been an adequate lineman. Now, I think that everything is trash right now, and Braxton Jones, that's included, right? And you're you're right, an organization is an organizational issue. I'm glad that you kind of cleaned it up. You're like, well, we haven't uh, we haven't um, invested serious assets. No, nah, Darnell Wright was a serious investment. Even getting Nate Davis at thirty million guaranteed is a serious investment. The Nate Davis is just a bad investment. You made a seriously bad fucking investment, right? Darnell Wright looks like he's still good, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not down on Darnell Wright. I think overall we need better production. But you look at this offensive line for the Bears. Yeah, we got Kieran Amagaje late, too. We invested some in that. We knew he was going to be a project. But he's, by most estimations, even outside the Bears, projected to at some point be a starter, right? Okay, cool, cool. But it, at this point, 
And the thing is, we built the team backwards. We built the team backwards. A lot of teams, let me not say all, but a lot of teams, they go out and they build up their offensive line. Once they feel solid about their offensive line, if they realize, hey, this offensive line solid, let's start making a change at quarterback, right? Uh, and or then let's go out and get some weapons. Let's go out and get you get you your your wide receivers because you got you your protection. The Bears are doing it ass backwards. Now I do still love the weapons that they got for Caleb Williams, but they did do it backwards. And like you said, we you continue you can only blame the quarterback so much when you keep putting every quarterback in the same situation, every quarterback in the same situation. And so listen, the Bears are now tied to Caleb. You have to fix this for Caleb Williams. Whatever Caleb's going to end up, he may, let's say he does end up being just an okay quarterback. It doesn't matter. You need an offensive line. You need that regardless. you got to go out and invest in the offensive line. You said this is the McCaskies. I don't know. I don't know how much the McCaskies pay attention to that. I just think that we just, like, for whatever reason, I, I'm not even going to try to diagnose it. Fix it. How about that? Fuck the diagnosis. Fuck the whys. I don't care. Fix it. That's where we are right now. Go out and fix it. Because not having your quarterback protected Right to where they're coming, they're running around for their life. They're going to get their heads knocked off. That that's you got to fix that. Regardless, there's not a single quarterback that's going to come in here and make this Bears offensive line look better. Not, I mean, not uh, like one of the better in the league. It's going to look like shit. Regardless, now you got some people that can dance around like pigs and they 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 feel comfortable uh, fr frolicking and shit. But that's not where we want to be at. Get it better. Go out there and invest in it. There's no more at this point. Darius, I'm right there with you. There's no more trying to give any more excuses for it. Go out there and fix it. You, you don't like we know they're not going to change the quarterback anytime soon. And listen, if they do, they're, they're, they need to get fired. Go out there and fix it. You got to go out there now and invest in this offensive line. Now I don't know how much can be changed during the season. Uh, you know, if he does make a move, it's going to be a move. But I don't think it's it's going to be a serious change there throughout the season. So you're going to have to hope for some better play. But listen, next offseason better be goddamn trenches heavy. And if it's not, what the hell is Ryan Poles doing? What is he doing? Go out there and figure it out. Go out there and fix it. And as far as Keenan, I, listen, at, 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 at this point, I'm so disappointed and have such a bad taste in my mouth from this offense. I don't, I, at least everybody right now is pissing me off. Everybody's pissing me off. So let's hope that it gets better. Uh, let's hope. Let's pray. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one is from Jay Capone. Yeah, man, what's going on? It's your boy Jay Capone, a.k.a. Jay Capone the Don, you know, but. I'm calling, man. What the fuck was that shit from the offense, man? We have no gumption. We don't. We don't ride by our players. We just let everybody just run, run up on us and everything. Like, there's got to be some accountability. Like, we don't. We listen. We are like a bull master, but we too friendly. We don't. We don't have that killer mentality. And Caleb with these overthrows and everything like that, man. This was a shit show, man. And I'm gonna say this: it's Caleb fault. It's Caleb fault. Look, you you supposed to be this generational talent, supposedly. You're you're the captain of the team, so it's it, it's on you. You know, we blame Justin Fields when it wasn't Justin Fields' fault, so it's only right to say it's Caleb fault. You know, and all I gotta say, we better get our shit together next week because we go against the coat and they looking pretty vulnerable. But shit, we ain't gonna be able to do nothing if we don't want to win. You gotta act like you want to win. Come on, like we didn't, we didn't do uh, hard not to just get embarrassed on national TV. Come on now. But shout out to the defense, man. I'm sorry for the defense, man. But some gotta give, man. Move Tab to to right guard. Shit, bring in Koran at the left guard. Shit, you ain't got nothing to lose because Nate Davis ain't doing shit. Coleman Shelton definitely ain't doing shit, but we got to stick with him until Ryan Bates come back. All I got to say is today, the Black Panther, the power of the Black Panther has been stripped away. 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 All I got to say, man, start up, bear down, man. But, man, I'm disappointed, man. All right. Yeah, bro, I agree with you. Um, that was shit. That was a that was a terrible performance. It was bad all the way around. Every bit of it was bad. It was terrible. It was bad. It wasn't pretty. It didn't look good. Um, that offensive line and I mean that uh offense in the second half was atrocious. It started off solidly. I think we had a, a couple of good possessions there where it looked like the offense may actually be moving up and down the field this game, and then that was quickly quickly torn away. This was trash, and it continues to be trash. And until we get better, it's gonna continue to be trash as well. Get better. Go out there. Fix it. That's what Ryan, that's your job here, Ryan Poles. Fix it. Because if we keep having performances like that, we're not just talking about a bad offense. 
Like I said earlier, we're talking about a generationally bad offense, right? That's what we're talking about, generationally bad. So we got to we gotta get something better. You talk about some the powers of the Black Panther has been stripped away. Hell, we never had him. We didn't even have him. We had hope. We had hope. That's all we fucking had was hope. And that's now stripped the hell away. That's getting stripped hope away. And what do hopeless Chicago Bears fans do? They get pissed off. Go out there and fix it. Guys, thank you for leaving those voicemails. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bear Central, gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-27, oh, sorry, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, but that's thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, die town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.